Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Joanna Juvelis, who is the senior multimedia journalist for the Belmont Citizen Herald. Joanna, we have election news in Belmont for the select board. We have one person in the race and one person out, it appears. Can you bring us up to date? I sure can, Roger. Thank you. So the news broke on Friday, January 22nd, that Tom Caputo, who is currently the vice chairman of the select board, will not seek re-election. Tom was elected in 2018 for the select board. And so he served his, he's almost done serving his first term. He decided not to continue, not to seek re-election. And his reasons are that it's increasingly demanding on you know, his, his time with his family, taking away time with his family, and also his full-time job. So he decided that he will not seek re-election. And Tom, in case people don't know this, was the chairman, is the chairman of the Financial Task Force 2, which recently recommended putting a $6.4 million override on the ballot in April. So the same day that the select board decided to, to put that override question on the ballot is the same day that Tom Caputo broke his news about not seeking the election. And <laughs> soon after, <laughs> on Monday, just, just, you know, a weekend goes by and on Monday, we get the news that Mark Palillo, who served as selectman from 2010 to 2019 and retired. He's been retired for two years now. He has decided to run again for select board. When he heard about Tom not running again, he felt really bad, but he said, you know, he, it's time for me to step in. We're in a financial crisis. It's a pandemic. And I believe I'm the best qualified to, to do this if there's no one else. So that's why he pulled papers and he has until February 16th to file them. Now, now, Roger, Mark Palillo is not one of those select board members who retired and did nothing. For the past two years, he's been very active. He served on the Financial Task Force too. He was, he's also uh, on the Council on Aging. He's the chairman. He's been very involved in the Belmont Women's Club and was recently appointed to this new, new committee called the Structural Impact Group. So he, he hasn't sat quietly. He's been very active for the past two years. And he grew up in Belmont. He graduated Belmont High in 1972, and he raised his, his two children here in Belmont. He's a full-time accountant. He's a partner with Ryan LLC and a tax advisor. Given that update on the select board race, uh, we also have uh, a race in the uh, for the school committee as well. And there are new developments there. Sure, I'll give you new developments on that. Mind you, there is no race for select board yet. We'll see what will happen right now. Mark pulled papers. He has until February 16th to file and we'll see if anybody else pulls. I'll keep you posted on that. Regarding school committee, as you know, I've reported that there is, there are three definite candidates running for two seats. Their incumbent Tara Donner, she's running for re-election to her three year seat. And then there's newcomers, Megan Moriarty and Jamal Saeed. I also reported though that, that there, are, there is an additional candidate. I reported last week a fourth candidate pulled papers, that's Timothy Flood. So my news today is that there is a potential fifth candidate and it's Evelyn Gomez. Evelyn Gomez is currently um, occupying the seat that was vacated by Susan Burgess Cox. She's been, so she's been serving, it'll be a year, well, almost a year. And she decided to run for reelection, but she admitted that she, really wasn't sure if she was going to do it. It's a, she knows it's a big commitment and she wasn't sure, but she said, I am the first person of color to ever serve on the Belmont School Committee. And I wanna continue what I've been doing. She's leading the equity subcommittee and she wants to eliminate the gap in Belmont for students of color, students with disabilities and English language learners. So she also has until February 16th to file her nomination papers. So we're still waiting to see, will Tim Flood file? Will Evelyn Gomez file? Will it be a five-way race for two seats, four-way race? Right now it's a three-way race. We talked a little last uh, week about the difference between polling papers and submitting signatures. Can you explain to folks uh, one more time what sure. that difference is? 
Absolutely. So you go to the town clerk you, to say that you want to pull papers, whatever the position is. She gives you your papers and then you have to get the signatures. So if you're running for a townwide office position, you need at least 50 signatures. Usually they recommend getting 25 extra, about 25% extra, just because she, the town clerk then has to verify those. So they need to get their signatures and then they have until February 16th to turn them back into the town clerk. And once she cert, uh, verifies all the signatures, then you become certified to, to be officially on the ballot. Okay, let's close the door on election news and let's talk about, to say it was an unfortunate incident understates it, but there was a tragedy in Belmont. Tragic, uh, definitely. Definitely. I reported on this tragedy last week, but I do have an update since. Um, a Boston man, 35-year-old Henry Tapia, he was killed on Upland Road in Belmont on January 19th. And he was but what we didn't know last week that it was a racially motivated incident. A 54 year old Hudson man named Dean Capsalis purposely ran over Henry with his truck and dragged him for a little bit. And then the first responders came and Henry unfortunately did not, did not make it. Uh, they brought him to Mass General where he was, where he's pronounced dead. So since then, They've, they've arrested. What happened was um, Dean Capsalis, he didn't immediately turn himself into the police. It was 30 minutes after the incident. He took off. It was a hit and run. But he turned himself in and he's had um, two, two hearings in Cambridge District Court since. So what's happened, the most recent, which was Monday, January 25th, is that he has been charged with murder, leaving the scene of an accident causing death, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and a civil rights violation. He's being held without bail and he's been ordered to have no contact with the victim's family or any witnesses in the case. I, I also didn't mention that um, his girlfriend, to Henry's girlfriend is Courtney Morton of Belmont. And they also have a little son together, a three-year-old son. Um, so he, he did have family in Belmont and very a lot of ties in Belmont and there's a fundraiser that's being held uh, in his memory to benefit Courtney Morton and, and her children. And it's, it's raised more than $142,000 um, as of Monday. So I'm sure people will continue contributing to that fundraiser. And there is a community forum on January 27th, which is uh, at 7.30 p.m. You can get on it via Zoom. And Marion Ryan, Middlesex District Attorney, who is also a Belmont resident, will be leading this forum, which is technically a select board meeting community forum. They, they're holding this community forum with Marion Ryan for residents who are pretty torn up about this. Okay, uh, let's talk about another tragedy in, in Belmont as well, a very popular uh, employee at Champion Sporting Goods has passed away. Yes. So Marty Connor was a very familiar face for anyone who cut through Belmont Center's uh, champion store or shopped there. A very familiar face, Marty Connor, worked there for almost 20 years. And he um, unfortunately was he, he was diagnosed with COVID in December and he fought a 22 day battle with it. On January 1st, he was intubated. It's the last time he got to speak to his wife, Gwen. And unfortunately, on January 20th, he, he passed away due to complications from COVID. The other thing that I want to mention about Marty is that he lived in Belmont for 33 years. He only moved two years ago back uh, to his wife's hometown in Topsfield. He raised his three sons in Belmont. They all graduated Belmont High. He coached soccer in Belmont for 17 years. And he actually even was very active on the Butler PTA when his sons went there for elementary school because he was a stay-at-home father. And there is a fundraiser being um, held in his memory. You can donate to goodsport.org and you can put in memory of Marty Connor and uh, to give notification to his wife, Gwen Connor. And uh, it's, it's an organization that 
his wife, Gwen, said, um, Marty, it really reminded her of Marty because they help um, kids who are less fortunate get outfitted for sports. And, and, you know, it's really a nice organization. And that's basically what he did at Champions. That was his job, outfitting kids for sports, fitting their skates, helping them with their baseball gloves. Thanks for bringing us up to date. You're welcome. You've been- You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. We've been speaking with Joanna Juvelis, who is the senior multimedia journalist for the Belmont Citizen Herald. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.